The views and opinions expressed on this program are those of the participants and do not reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. BronxNet. Your voice, your views, your vision. And good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Open. It's the one and only show that opens up the Bronx and the world to you. I'm your host, the Dr. Bob Lee from 107.5 WBLS, your number one source for R&B. We got it going on right here on Open's Channel 67. We have an incredible show lined up for you. And leading up the show will be our own sports anchor, Bobby C. Now today, it's going to bring you a special Super Bowl edition of uh, his sports roundup. It's going to be nice. It's going to be super. After that, Victor Forbes, the founder and editor of Fine Art Magazine, is going to be dropping by to talk about his magazine and how the Bronx has influenced it. Now, he's going to be joined by reggae legend Hilton B. Hilton B in the house! He's going to sit down with us to reflect on his musical career spanning over 40 years. Musical guest, Shelton Quiller and Andreas Patterson. They're going to perform on today's Music Monday. So stay tuned. All this and more is headed your way because we are now open for business. And a good, good, good morning to you. I'm your host, Dr. Bob Lee, and you're watching Open. Today is Monday, February 4th, 2013. We got a fantastic show lined up for you today, but uh, Bobby C., he's going to deliver his super sports roundup in just a few minutes. But uh, we're still astonished. We're like amazed of what took place at Super Bowl 47 last night. It was an absolute magnificent game. Uh, it even included a blackout. Beyonce was there. Um, a number of uh, Miss Hudson was there. Jennifer Hudson, Alicia Keys performed. Sandy Hook Elementary School students were there. I mean, it was, it was fantastic. But who sucked up all the power out of that stadium? Was it Beyonce? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, we had Size a, a, a 34-minute blackout. Although that was a score, too. They won 34 or 34. 29, or I think that was. 31, right? something like that? Yeah. Yeah. You got to get that right. But I was watching close during that time. I got to see it during the laundry mat. That was You're a good game. You're not into football. No, I'm, I'm into it, though. But, um, but you heard about the blackout. Yeah, I definitely heard about it. What do you think it. happened? Somebody pulled the switch? I, Did they I, want to give uh, San Francisco a breather? You, you, they wanted to change the course of the game or the momentum of the game? What do you think took place there? Maybe one of the advertisers didn't put up enough money. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of people got in yeah. trouble for it, and they're, they're still under investigation. You know what I think? Uh, you know, I, I used to box. And sometimes when a guy's in trouble, you know, the coach in the corner will, like, put some grease on the glove and make the tape come up just a little bit. Right, right. And so the ref will make you go back to your corner. And if you're really, really tired, that really helps out. When you go back to the corner, you get another minute because uh, your, your, your guy will you're take his time. You're buying time, Yeah, you're yeah. buying some time. Okay. He's going to take his time and taping you back up. And by that time, they hope that, you know, you can get, you know, some energy going. And everything. Right. And maybe give you a little bit of water and you go back out there and you may change the course of the fight. Those are seasoned people. They understand. They've been around. <laughs> you think for something longer. like that happened? Yeah, though? I think it's very key, though. I think you're on to something. But other than that, I think that was a very good game. I think they were oh, just man. real. I've never seen so many touchdowns scored in such a short period of time. Yeah. Like under two minutes, they were just scoring back and forth. Right. Normally, you would see, you know, maybe every 10 minutes or something, yeah. a touchdown is being scored. Who but are you they going were just for? I really, <laughs> Bob, you're putting me on the spot with that one, well, man. But I'll I just you, thought they was both. I, I was they a was Denver Broncos fan. fan okay. I enjoyed the game. I wanted them to win. I was rooting them on. I was rooting them on. But Colin Kaepernick, he did such a fine job that I had to oh, wear the shirt today. Oh, here we go. There we go. San Francisco. They must Give be them their credit. The guy yeah. only played 10 games mm -hmm. and almost won a Super Bowl. So here you go. <laughs> That's all right. But you know what? I wasn't really so much into the Super Bowl since the Dallas Cowboys had Tom Landry. You Whoa, know, that what? 
out. Yeah, and, and I uh, was ten years old. Yeah, <laughs> well, well, that's Tony Dawes said that was that's my era. You know, uh, I think that's when football was football. You know, yeah. but I thought last night was a great game, though. Mm. I mean, I came in in the middle of the game, but I thought it was it was a they really fought, man. I think what about those football. commercials? I didn't even get a chance to see that. I told you I was watching clothes, Bob. <laughs> But other than You're that, watching man. clothes yeah, on the man. Super Bowl Listen, Sunday. Uh, you know, things you got to get it straight, right? You got to take care of things. Things are so yeah. important, man. But other than that, well, listen, our producers are telling us to wrap it up. Yeah. But well, I, one of the commercials that I remember is that uh, um, one of the trainers, he was taking care of one of the Clodsdale horses. He was yeah. born, he was feeding it with a baby bottle and everything. Then the, the horse grew up and the, the horse went off to work with Budweiser. And then the horse came through in the parade with other horses. And uh, the, the trainer was on the side watching his horse come by, and there was almost a tear in his eye. And then he took off, and he saw the horse in his rear view, view uh -huh. mirror. And he got weighed the horse down, and they, they met up together, and they hugged and, you know, kissed him on the thing or whatever, you know, fed him down. Well, you and know what, Bob? back together again, a reunining of the trainer and the horse. I would say Bobby yeah. C. is going to fill us in on the yeah, rest. Bobby the horse that I know, he'll be in and later on to talk <laughs> That's about right. that. All right. Thanks All right. You, we'll talk we'll be to right you. back. Thank you. And Bobby C. is going to take to the stage and hit us with a one-two punch and throw some touchdowns. Next. Coming home can be hard if you're a veteran of Iraq or Afghanistan. You may feel like you're all alone. But you're not alone. At IAVA.org, your fellow vets are all around you. Join our free online community, get the resources you need, and connect to other vets who know where you're coming from. IAVA.org, we've got your back. How you doing? Hi. Hi. Have a nice day. You too. Thanks. If only child abuse were this easy to recognize. If you even suspect abuse, call 1-800-4-A-CHILD. All calls are anonymous and confidential. Trust your instincts. kitchen surfaces, utensils, and hands with soapy water. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door, on this and nothing more. Those are the opening lines of the late great poet Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven the inspiration for the Baltimore football team's name. And on Sunday night with the world watching, the Ravens were tapping at the San Francisco 49ers door. When it opened, it wasn't the man that was once mocked as Shane Falco. As in the film, The Replacements, no, no Keanu Reeves here. Instead, it was Joe Flacco. As in, by the end of the night, I've thrown 11 touchdowns this postseason with no interceptions and I'm Never more the marginal quarterback, never more Falco, always to be remembered as Super Bowl MVP. That's right, the Baltimore Ravens and the Dark Knight, Joe Flacco himself, 
top the Niners in Super Bowl 47 in New Orleans, holding on 34-31 in what turned out to be a much more entertaining Super Bowl than expected. The Ravens offense behind Flacco's three first touchdowns. First half touchdowns led 21-6 at half and then 28-6 after the longest kickoff return in the game's history to start the third quarter, courtesy of Jacoby Jones, who also nabbed a TD pass in the second quarter. But then a 34-minute delay brought on by a blackout at the Mercedes-Benz Superdome appeared to change the momentum of the game as San Fran capitalized with two quick scores to pull within 28-20. A David Akers field goal near the end of the third quarter made it 28-23 heading into the fourth. But a pair of Baltimore field goals wrapped around a Colin Kaepernick TD for the Niners was just enough for the Ravens who even surrendered a two-point safety in the closing seconds and held off the Niners in the closing minutes on a goal line stand that sent off Baltimore linebacker Ray Lewis into the sunset a champion. Lewis, who played pretty well, capped a 17-year career by going out in style. Lewis may be as responsible for the Ravens' postseason success as any. The emotional leader fueled Baltimore's late season run by declaring this postseason his last following an injury that nearly took away his season. Lewis would return in the Ravens like last year's New York football Giants went on a tear in December and January and right into Super Bowls on Sunday. The late game fireworks overshadowed the Harbaugh Bowl as the two coaching brothers made history in the game. Meanwhile, Niners QB Colin Kaepernick also took a back seat in this one despite a solid performance from the second year pro. The biracial quarterback made headlines for being the fourth black quarterback to star in the Super Bowl after making headlines throughout the regular season. First for taking Alex Smith's job and later for leading the Niners into the big game. A lot was made of his childhood as well. He was given up for adoption and has an estranged biological father. But when push came to shove on Sunday, it appeared that destiny won out again. In a season when the Ravens said goodbye to owner Art Modell, who passed away, and came to grips with the fact that Ray Lewis was gearing up for one more playoff, the franchise summoned a run we have seen before. And for that, they are Super Bowl champions. Time for some quick hitters from around the world of sports. The New York football giants are working on new deals with wide receivers Akeem Nix and Victor Cruz. Sources say at the moment that Nix has taken priority over Cruz. The New York Jets are hoping to trade backup quarterback Tim Tebow, according to reports. Tebow has been working out vehemently, sources say, in hopes of a shot to play QB in the NFL next season. The Jets may also be interested in former first-round bust Jamarcus Russell. To the NBA hardwood, the New York Knicks are once again surging. The orange and blue have rattled off four straight and are playing well on the home stand. Saturday night, the Knicks demolished the Sacramento Kings 120-81. Former Giants and Jets head coach Bill Parcells will headline this summer's Pro Football Hall of Fame induction class in Canton, Ohio. Giants great Michael Strahan will have to wait at least another year. Running back Adrian Peterson in his record-setting season on the gridiron took home NFL MVP honors. He's also the Offensive Player of the Year. And tonight, the Knicks will look to make it five in a row as they finish off the home stand at Madison Square Garden when they welcome Detroit to MSG for a 7.30 p.m. tip. New York is 15 games over 500 for the first time since 2001. Knicks coach Mike Woodson was nearly bound for Houston's All-Star game if the Heat would have lost on Sunday, but they didn't. But a win will now allow Woodson a chance to have a vacate. Woodson may be not heading to Houston, but some sources believe that seldom used Nick reserve James White might take part in the dunk contest on All-Star Saturday night. The Brooklyn Nets are coming off a big bounce back win Friday night against Chicago. The Nets won 93-89. All-Star Brooke Lopez led the way with 20 points. The LA Lakers are now on tap. They come to the BK Tuesday night. On the ice, the Broadway Blue Shirts also bounced back from their Thursday night defeat to Pittsburgh. The Rangers topped Tampa Bay 3-2 Saturday night. The 3-0 loss to the Pens seemed to fuel them over the weekend. Let's take, let's take a quick look back. To get one in the net, it, it definitely feels good against a goalie of that caliber to know you got uh, one on him in the first period. We played well away from the puck as well, and we we, uh, we limited their opportunities. We capitalized with the power play, which was really big. The penalty kill you know, had to come up big, especially there in the third. And, and uh, this was a, a good a good road win, a good 3 nothing victory. We took away their speed off the rush. We got a lot of talented players. And we played good in our own end. And uh, Vokun did a great job tonight, and uh, thanks to him, we got a victory. 
we, we were just you know where we need to be and you know we didn't let them you know go east east west and all the shots were coming straight at me so you know it makes it a lot easier for goalie. We it was a collective. Uh, it's probably the worst we've played all year collectively. It's dumbfounding to me, but we have to try to find a way to figure it out and get ready to play Tampa. The Rangers will be in New Jersey Tuesday night taking on the Devils in Newark. The Devils got the better of the New York Islanders yesterday, winning 3 nothing out on the island. And from the baseball diamond, Yankees first baseman Mark Teixeira admitted this week in an interview that he's overpaid. He said at this point in his career, there's no way he can put up the numbers to justify his contract. He also was quoted as saying that many players are overpaid. He acknowledged that he was a bargain in his prime and that the Yanks are probably paying for that now. Well, at least he's honest. Those are the headlines. We hit the C-list for one final thought on the Super Bowl. Out of my Friday morning prediction of 3020 Ravens, Edgar Allan Poe and the famous Poe Cottage has plenty of history in the Bronx, and I think it's cool that he's a part of Raven lore in a way. The Vince Lombardi Trophy, the championship trophy, will forever have a connection to a man in Vince Lombardi that will forever be tied to Fordham University and the borough as well. But for me, it was a local kid that's not exactly a Bronx boy, although he has spent plenty of time here. Instead, he's just from up the road. Nourishell's Ray Rice, the former pride of the Big East and Rutgers, was solid in the big game. He provided the local flavor. Kudos to him. And of course, kudos to all, including me that predicted a Ravens Super Bowl victory. I was happy to see them win in the big game. That's your sports. I'm Bobby C. Dr. Bob. Yes, sir. That was a great game. It was a great game. You know, the, the beauty of picking Super Bowls is you got a 50-50 chance of yeah. picking the right guy yeah, right. <laughs> to win it all. So. Did you think when the lights went out that the momentum shifted? You know, they were talking about it on the telecast, and um, you know, I, I didn't think it was going to shift the momentum, yeah. but it, it, seemed, it, definitely it seemed like seemed it did, it. right? For yeah. a while, I said, whoa, here we go. Because everybody I heard was sitting you got around. A little Niners rooting interest too, but <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I went for the Ravens. I was rooting for the Ravens, but you know what? <laughs> uh, Niners. <laughs> I got to give it to Kaepernick, and I got to give it to that team. Uh, great. I mean, he only played ten games. He did, and you know, it looks like he's going to be a great player. He's going to be around for a while. Who's he? Twenty-five years old. Twenty-five years old. You got to give it to him, and that's why I wear the shirt today. There you go. <laughs> no, they Bobby's... definitely look like they could win it. Yeah, yeah. Game, so, all right. And I heard you guys talking about the. Uh, the commercials uh, upstairs. We were talking about it before too. I think the two two best in my Which book were. Um, I love the Tide commercial with the Joe Montana. Yeah. yeah. You know, and uh, I think the GoDaddy commercial was another one. Oh, oh that was just good. Oh, yeah. like, well, that loud good. kissing was like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, you know, I Look love for the him, kiss, though. but that was good like for a, him. That was an ugly kiss. It was a little <laughs> for 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 her. Uh, yeah. <laughs> for him, pretty good. There you pretty go. Good. Bobby C, give him a big round of applause, everybody. Yes, indeed. We applaud you. You're a Super Bowl of a person. Thank you. <laughs> Likewise. All right, we got to take a quick break, but Victor Forbes is coming up next. Don't go away. This is one amazing truffle tree. Can you imagine a place where these grow everywhere? Yes, it's called the forest, a magical place to enjoy with your family. So discover the forest and explore all the wonder that's there. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. out a hand to one, we can influence the condition of all. That's what it means to live united. G morning sunshine. Wakey wakey. Text me. Are your parents home later? We can hang. LUV love you. JK. Holla back. Holla back. Holla back. <laughs> 
Are you with your friends? That's lame. We're in a huge fight right now. XO. What'd you dream about? Something I did. Are you on your way to the I'm lonely. Nude pics. Send me some. Text me. Chill raw and prepared foods promptly. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. I'm lucky. Let me help you with that. I get to do something I love. It has nothing to do with touchdowns or titles. Everybody bring it in. I get to play a part in the life of someone just starting out. How many of you think homework is just as important as teamwork? I help keep kids in school. Good. And that's the name of the game. My name is LaDainian Thomason. I don't just wear the shirt. I live it. Give. Advocate. Volunteer. Live United. Hands can do incredible things. Now they can even help save a life with hands-only CPR. If you see an adult suddenly collapse, just call 911, then push hard and fast in the center of the chest until help arrives. Learn more at handsonlycpr.org. Where are you? Hey, Mom. You know, girls, I used to cheer back in my day. Ready? Okay! That was amazing, amazing, amazing. Mom, that was amazing. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of siblings in foster care who'll take you just as you are. And welcome back, everybody. I'm your host, Dr. Bob Lee from BLS. Our next guest is a founder and editor of Fine Arts Magazine. Today, he's here to talk about the influence that the Bronx has had on his magazine for more than 30 years. And uh, today, he's joined by a, a cult figure in, in the world of reggae and has been uh, recording since uh, 1964. Please welcome Victor Forbes and, and Hilton B. Hilton B is in the house. Here we go. Yeah, man. All righty. You've been doing your thing for a while, huh? For a long time. Yeah, yeah. yeah I right, so here. we're going to try to get you to do a little something, something, something. Even if it's a cappella, I don't no know. Get the music. <laughs> no problem. So this is your magazine. Finally. Yes, yes, uh -huh. it's uh, our magazine. And uh, I started as a sports writer in the Bronx, uh -huh. uh, covering Diva Clinton basketball in 1966 and wow, 1967. Yeah. Yes, and uh, I'd like to give a shout out to Mike Schweitzer, who was the captain of that undefeated PSAL uh -huh. team in 1966. That got me started in writing sports. Yeah. And it evolved into an art magazine. But early on in the magazine's career... We started covering reggae music, and uh, it was our, it's a great honor to be here sitting next to Hilton Beckford. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you. Yeah, let me yeah. tell you. This man has, he knows everything about music, especially reggae music, and it's a real privilege to, yeah. to be with him and to have worked so closely with him over the years, and now we're ready to release our, mm. our, the fruits of our labor. There you go. You know, me and David Levy was on the, uh, the air last night, uh, and he plays a lot of your music, of course. Yes. And David Levy does the, the reggae music for WBLS. Now, this fine arts magazine, what's it all about? Tell us. Well, it's about the cultural scene in, in the world today. And um, we're preparing a special issue of Bronx Fine Art that's going to come out for uh, March 20th for the mm -hmm. Art Expo in New York City. And we're covering a lot of artists in the Bronx. In fact, uh, we're going to be doing a big story on uh, Poe Park and the Poe House. Uh, uh -huh. And uh, those Ravens, they did it. And who would have wow. thought that a team named after a, a poem would win the Super Bowl? Isn't that something? That's how it goes sometimes. Uh -huh. you Tell never us know. a little bit about that. How did they get their name? Well, Bobby C. was so great in reciting the Raven. Who would have thought <laughs> a sportscaster would uh, recite that? That's uh -huh. such a great poem. And, uh, well, you know, Baltimore was originally the Cleveland Browns. Yeah. which is a real shock and uh, mm. it was owned by the Modell family which is the owner of the sporting goods stores mm -hmm. all over the place the Modells right. and he snuck them out of Cleveland one night in the middle of the night <laughs> and brought <laughs> them into Baltimore that. 
and they became the Ravens, named after Edgar Allan Poe, because uh, Poe was born in Baltimore. Uh -huh. And in this magazine, it's just coincidental that we have a review of a book that one of our art galleries uh, published on uh, Edgar Allan Poe. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, we did a big review of it in, in this particular issue that you're holding. Wow. So it was the Ravens' time, I guess, and right now we're thinking it's going to be Hilton B's time. Let's hey. talk about the influence uh, of, uh, well, how did you guys come together? You, you were part of this magazine also? Well, he's or part he's of, uh, we're part of each other's lives for yeah. uh, whatever, whatever the reason. Right, uh, we've been together through marriages and this is and that's so Not his marriage, my marriage. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I met Victor, uh, met Victor in 19... 73. 73. Uh -huh. And, um, well, I was just passing through, check my boys and realized and run into him, you know. I yeah. was wondering what he's up for, you know. Uh -huh. But the rest of the two guys knew him, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think then I, I was out from the group for a little while. Yeah. So I just stay by myself and the guys them stay by themselves. So yeah. they was arranging a tour behind me. Yeah, yeah. You know, so and yeah, I'm the founder founding father of Johnny Too Bad, one of the biggest RPM record that ever mm -hmm. comes out of Jamaica. Yeah, yeah. Not even Bob Marley who died and gone ever make a four to five that big. Right, right. I right. have eighty artists between Britain, American, that's covered that Under song. your company? Uh, yes. 80 yes. artists? 80. 80. Uh -huh. That sang yeah. the song or, or? Taj Bonner, Rich Evans, John Martin, UB40, you, you name it down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got everybody there. So but they re-recorded your record? Yeah, re-recorded. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, so I was out for a while, you know, taking care of the family, you uh -huh. know. I love my kids there, oh, you know, yeah. my wife and... You know, we together, what, 42 years. Wow. Thank God yeah. for her, you know. And here we go again with Victor uh -huh. back in the scene. I've been giving him a chance, giving him a chance for um, like 25 years. Uh -huh. wow. Said, okay, here I am, <laughs> you know. I'm one of the Jamaican artists that never been sold out, signed a contract with a big company, uh -huh. you know. So... I give him a chance to take a break with me. Yeah. You know, yeah. and then you try and he fail, you know, yeah. and he keep trying. Yeah, he get, gets up and dusts his yes, stuff off. Yes, he and keep trying and tries I again. Give him a chance because I live in South Florida. Yeah. You know, so every time he call me, I'm there for them, you know. He, he has a wonderful, well, ex wife, uh -huh. Jamie Forbes, you know, who helped put everything together. So. Yeah. Well, and he's part of the her. Forbes family, so he's very rich. He has a lot of nobody <laughs> We're the Bronx Forbes. <laughs> the Bronx Forbes. <laughs> yeah, the Bronx Forbes. <laughs> yeah. So, so when, uh, when Hilton B. came walking up the road in 1973 uh -huh. in this little town called Morant Bay. Uh -huh. um, Morant Bay. Where Jamaica. Was Jamaica. That's, yeah. uh, That's where you're from? Morant Bay? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. It's halfway between Kingston and um, Port Antonio. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, I used to travel all through there doing the... Um, the uh, Reggae Sunsplash, uh, yeah. Carnival. Okay. Yeah. I've been downtown, I've been Montego Bay, uh, Spanish Town, Man Ma Mandeville. Mandeville. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. All those places. Walking through the mountains and stuff. <laughs> yes, you were saying that. Yeah, I ended up there. <laughs> well, somehow I ended up as a school teacher in Jamaica after I graduated Lehman. Yes. And I went down to uh, teach school down there. I was teaching music and. Uh, Mm. and whatnot and uh, I met uh, somebody in a little town there uh, who instructed me to go take the bus to Morant Bay because there's a couple of singers there that would like ah. to make some music with oh. and uh, I had never heard of a movie The Harder They Come or anything like that but the gentleman owned a little uh, uh, shop in a place called Hector's River uh -huh. where I was teaching school and he said uh, my son has a band called The Pioneers and my other son has a band called The Slickers yeah. and he showed me newspaper clippings with this and that and I took my guitar and we went down there and we did some uh, beautiful music. And uh, then I started learning about uh, Johnny Too Bad, but uh -huh. not too much, because uh, <laughs> Hilton wasn't in the group at the time. Oh, okay. All right? There was some kind of situations going on. And uh, the one night that I had uh, come down there and went to Kingston with uh, Winston Bailey, who was singing, he was, he was looking at what cash a royalty check down there. Uh -huh. 
and I came back and uh, <laughs> was uh, hanging out with the guys and then Hilton comes walking up the street and um, it was uh, that was the first time we met. Yeah, mom, what you got for me? <laughs> <laughs> As he says that, he has a watch. Uh-huh. That from way back? From way back that he <laughs> they took off his hand. On the steal bus. it on oh, the bus. Oh, they did? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> but I had my bus. guitar. So you lost it? No, no. Oh, you set it down or they took they it off? They it off. Oh, my you God. Know, and <laughs> Couldn't even feel it going. <laughs> what story, you know, uh -huh. in Jamaica, you know, you can hide a little pistol yeah, and yeah, things. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I say, if I was there with you, they would be <laughs> looking at this, you know, so don't worry. And, uh -huh. you know, it goes on that he planned the tour and we all get together and come up and we did all right we did all right went mm. back home and yeah. everybody it was a kill for johnny too bad you know uh -huh. and i have a couple of songs that he wanted to put out the 15th of april like oh. old matai johnny nash johnny nash um yeah. wrote that song so i do a pretty version of it mm -hmm. you know beautiful yes so you, you, he's going to be featured in, in one of these coming Next out? issue coming up. Next issue. Yeah. Okay. We uh, cut some sessions in the last few years with some uh, wonderful musicians. And uh, I think it's about time that the world recognized Hilton Beckford. Because mm -hmm. what happened was on that, uh, that movie soundtrack, The Harder They Come, you know, it's listed as number 119 in Rolling Stone's top oh, 500 yeah. of all time. Uh -huh. Ahead of Bruce Springsteen, ahead of uh, Sly and the Family Stone. It's, it's, it's a major record, but since it has a picture of the... Uh, the outlaw on the cover as represented by Jimmy Cliff uh -huh. most people don't read the liner notes right. so they all think it's a Jimmy Cliff song but it's actually the slickers and on the LP back then uh, cut one on side two Johnny Too Bad by the slickers and it was credited to Hilton Beckford Winston Bailey Derek Crooks and Trevor Wilson Trevor Wilson Trevor Wilson was the original guy who Hilton wrote the song about, and you could tell that story if you like. Ah. <laughs> it's a true story. <laughs> yes, this is for fact. Um, I used to do tailoring, mm -hmm. and um, I was living in Trenchtown, 101st Street. Trenchtown! Yes. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's where I grew up part of my life. Bob Marley spoke a lot about Trenchtown. Yes, and um, there you go. There I was soon as a brother called Trevor Wilson, uh -huh. which is a wild cat. Why? Anyhow, it, he came up t to my apartment and wanted me to make a pants and a shirt for him. Yeah. The same material because they have a party to go on the Saturday, which was the Thursday, the Thursday thing. Yeah. You sew? You, you, yes. You would, okay. so, yes. Yeah. yeah, so in order to take his measurement, you have to take, put his pants, put his shirt in his pants. Right, right. And <laughs> so lift up his shirt and take out a four or five and, <laughs> and a ratchet, a knife they call a ratchet, oh. and put it on a machine, you know. Yeah. So taking measurement, honestly, is, them time is the closest I really was to a gun, yeah. you know. Wow. And after I do that, he gave me thirty dollars to buy the material. Me too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he was going downstairs, and I stood watching him going downstairs. And I said, "Boy, Trevor, bad boy, you know, knowing that he wearing a gun, you, got you know, yes." Yeah, so he went downstairs, go through the gate. So I start. I was sweating something. I started to run my machine. And singing, walking down the road with a pistol in your waist, <laughs> travel you too bad. Yeah. You know, and my, my aunt was in the bathroom <laughs> listening to me. Yeah. And I said, Boy, she loves to call me boy. Boy, yeah. you better don't sing any song about Trevor. Yeah. That you know how him stay. Yeah. You know? So I said, Then. The song just start build from there, yeah. you know, build from there, build from there until. So, so can you sing some of that when we come back? Oh yes. So we're gonna take a break right oh, here, yes. and then we'll welcome back uh, more with uh, Hilton B and Victor Forbes coming up next right here on Opens Channel 67.
There is also a very attractive extended warranty option that includes free service and parts for the next five years. But there's no need for you to get that. You failed to get the test you needed at the doctor that would have detected disease early enough where it could have been treated. So you won't be around in two years to see him grow up, which means the warranty would be useless. Okay, sign here, please. For a list of tests every man should have, go to ahrq.gov. Did you find a flashlight on the batteries? Yes. Did you make sure we're not missing anything in the first aid kit? Yep. Did you go through the plan with the kids again? Yes. The more you prepare today, the more you'll be able to reduce the devastating effects of a tornado, an earthquake, a power outage, or any other disaster. We can all be energy savers. <laughs> it's easy. Turn off lights. Use energy saving light bulbs. Turn off electronics and appliances when not in use. Make a change and we can really fly. Learn more at energy.gov slash kids. Cook foods to the right temperature using a food thermometer. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> Cut from a nice piece from Hilton V. <laughs> Tell us about that track right there, Hilton. Hilton's with us with uh, Mr. Forbes from the Fine Arts Magazine, Victor Forbes, the founding editor. And we're sitting here together enjoying your music, you know, because you've been around for over 25 years. Uh, yeah. From Jamaica, yeah, man. Enough years, man. Enough, Enough respect. Years. Thanks. Well, all my tight it's, it's all about him because uh, he sent called me from Florida uh -huh. comes up for a Monday night party at the cutting room right mm -hmm. that's where I found um, the lady that do the harmony and this track uh -huh. called Old Matthias and Richie uh, Richie Canada uh, from Billy Joel's uh, old band the sax man from Billy Joel's band runs a Monday night jam at the cutting uh -huh. room for years and years and years top-notch musicians right so uh, we uh, um, well, what really happened was Hilton had the idea for this song and he worked with his musical director a great player named Small Axe mm. and Small Axe cut the uh, the basic tracks on the keys and uh, he calls me up and he starts playing me this this cut over the telephone and it really it was just great you know how if you love reggae music everybody loves Johnny Nash and yeah, yeah. they had a version of hold me tight uh -huh. and uh, yeah we got to come up and we got to work something this was a few years ago uh -huh comes up and um, signs up for the jam at Richie Canada's thing, gets up on stage, does his thing, and the young woman who had sang right before him, who was just really great, as soon as he breaks into one of his cuts, she just burst onto the stage, <laughs> grabbed the microphone, uh, and yeah. uh, we just said, this, yeah. this was just too good to let slide. Uh -huh. Yes. So then uh, Richie... Uh, that's how it happens. That's how, <laughs> that's, yes. that's how it happens. Yes. that. Her name uh, is Jessica Starr. She lives in Brooklyn. Hello, Jessica, wherever you may be. Yeah. 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 So we, we take it from there to uh, the studio, midnight, and we work that song. Um, the guys, the musicians, them excellent, excellent, you know, and we said we're going to voice it tonight. We need to voice this track. Mm. So 
Jessica walked up and we uh, gave, him, gave her the line and she wrote the song just right there, just that night and yeah. we get it done. Some so, people stay in the studio all day and all night, uh, but this didn't take, it just took uh, one day, just, right? Just not even a day. While you know your line and you you yeah. <laughs> hearing what you want, you're going for it. Yeah, yeah. You know, so you go. Have you got? Have you guys performed this anywhere live? Yes, yes, yes. We did. I did in mostly my performing in yeah. South Florida and and sometime up here. You know, when yeah. Victor get the hope for right. me. Now you you performed with a lot of people. Name some of the oh, people. Yeah. Yellow Man. Well, yellow man, oh, yeah. Well, he and I is from one parish, uh -huh. St. Thomas. Yes, you know, he's from Yala, so I'm from Warren Bay. Yes, yes. You know, and a lot of guys, a lot of guys. Eptones, Leroy Smart, Fred McKay, Ernest Wilson, and um, Gregory Isaacs. Gregory Isaac, oh, you yeah, name yeah, it yeah. down. You know, uh -huh. whole bunch of artists, you know, because I, I used to promote show on the island, so yeah. I happened to be MC and open at the said time. Oh, the, you did it all. You sold, yeah. make yeah. clothes, the MC, Everything. get your own music, you write, yes, sing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Beautiful, yes, sir. beautiful. Mm -hmm. So what, what's next? What, what's coming up? You got this new record. Yes. Victor can take it from there, right? Yeah. Well, we just, um, we just mastered um, a bunch of tracks, and we'll have them out. We're going to come out with a 12-inch 45, oh. uh, um, disco style, but it's pure reggae, pure Hilton B. Uh -huh. And um, it, it's called, um, he, he kind of rewrote and updated Johnny Too Bad, and we call it Johnny on the Run. Yeah. So we have a great track with that. That's going to be uh, one track. And then that, that goes with it. We use the same rhythm track for a song that his old bandmate, uh, Ross Abraham, wrote yeah. um, called uh, Do You Remember? It's uh -huh. a story about Marcus Garvey. The Hilton B rhythm. Yes. Hilton B rhythm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Hilton Definitely. B rhythm, the vocals, melody line, everything. And... Uh, Hilton B had on, on the drums for that shot, we had uh, Liberty DeVito, who played mm -hmm. with Billy Joel for 30 years, and Liberty told us that he loved reggae music, and before they had uh, Billy Joel as their lead singer, they were a reggae band. Wow. So um, it's, it's just wow. a very wonderful uh, mm -hmm. cut. All right, but, uh, where can we get this magazine? Because you're going to be featured in this magazine on the next time it comes out, right? It comes yeah. out in April? Uh, April. Yeah, April, April 1st, 1st edition. Uh -huh. It'll be out, uh, well, they, they could pick some up at the Barnes & Nobles uh, in New York City. Mm -hmm. And if anybody wants to see us at the Art Expo um, at the Pier, Pier 94 on 57th Street, yeah. we'll be there March 22nd to March 25th. And uh, a number of art galleries all throughout New York and the Bronx will be yeah. uh, distributing the magazines. Beautiful. There you go. Victor Forbes, founder and editor of Fine Arts Magazine. And Hilton B., Hilton B., reggae artist for over... 20, not only a reggae artist, but uh, uh, writer, producer, yes, MC, MC. <laughs> <laughs> and a sewing machine man, yes, making sir. clothes and stuff. Uh, yeah. Can, now, this record that I'm going to play on the way out is, uh, is uh, your latest record, right? Yes, that's the one coming out 15, uh -huh. April 15. Uh, let me hear that. Yeah. Drop that. DJ Cool Clyde dropping it like it's hot. Ba -ba -ba -bam. <laughs> is it right here? Yeah, if you want to, yeah. Right, Give me a few bars, a few bars. In trench down. Hey. hey! And I used to watch Bob Marley coming down the street, juggling his football. Juggling his football. Going over the park. A spliff in my mouth. You know? Ah, ha, 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 ha. we got to take a quick break, but when we come back, Shelton Quiller and Andreas Patterson, he's going to perform. We got to take us home. Sing it out, sing it out. Here we go, here we go, here we go. I'm lucky. Let me help you with that. I get to do something I love. It has nothing to do with touchdowns or titles. Everybody bring it in. I get to play a part in the life of someone just starting out. How many of you think homework is just as important as teamwork? I help keep kids in school. Good. And that's the name of the game. My name is LaDainian Thomason. I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. Give, advocate, volunteer. Live United. Ten 
nine, and six. Hands can do incredible things. Now they can even help save a life with hands-only CPR. If you see an adult suddenly collapse, just call 911, then push hard and fast in the center of the chest until help arrives. Learn more at handsonlycpr.org. Hey, Mom. Hey, Mom. You know, girls, I used to cheer back in my day. Ready? Okay! was amazing, amazing, amazing. Mom, that was amazing. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of siblings in foster care who'll take you just as you are. Megan, you're a tramp. Ryan Fitch told me you guys made out. Everybody knows. He says you're the most desperate girl he knows, besides your mom. How many boyfriends does she have anyway? Lots? That zit is huge, zit face. You know, when I was younger, man, my, my brother was the one who really took care of me, man. Is that right? Hey, he'd wake me up in the morning, get me ready for school, take a shower, have, make me some breakfast. Where your brother at now? Oh, he know. All right. I get lonely, nobody to talk to. I felt like quitting school. He looked at my dad in my eye, he told me, if not for me, I'll do it for him. Give Josh and our class of 08 the boost they need to graduate. Join us at boostup.org. Welcome back, everybody. DJ Ku Clyde on the ones and <laughs> And right now, once again, it's time for Music Mondays.
And our next guests are gospel musicians who will bless us with their performance momentarily. So please welcome to the open stage, Shelton Krilla and Andreas Patterson. Give them a big round of applause, everybody. Here we go. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, yeah. Oh. 